property to go up so um, you will be able to watch it back if you need to and if you've had colleagues who weren't able to attend as well um, so we'll get started um, so in terms of the agenda for today's session so we're going to start with um, welcome and introductions and we're really happy to have um, Councillor Bramble and Councillor Kennedy here with us today and um, we'll give you a little bit of background on the grants programme and our learning over the past few years. We'll talk about this year's programme um, and the grants available. We'll go through some of the practicalities of the application process and finish off with some key information on next steps. In terms of housekeeping for today, please do keep yourself on mute for the whole time. Um, a copy of the slides will be shared after the event via email um, and we will aim to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the session but do feel free to pop any questions into the chat box and we'll try and answer those. Um, so just in terms of some of the key um, terms we'll be using today, so BCS, voluntary and community sector, um, organisational group um, will be used interchangeably. Um, we'll also be referring to structured groups of residents, that's specifically for community chess grants. Um, we will um, use fund or scheme interchangeably um, and also request is your request for funding. Um, so just to kick off, um, I'm going to ask each of the team if they could introduce themselves in the um, order that's on the slide. So if we start with Moyo. Yes, my name is Moyo Adeneye and I'm a grants investment officer in the team. Thanks Moyo. I'm Lisa, I'm the grants and investment manager. Hi, uh, my name's Sue, I'm a strategic delivery officer. Hi there, my name's Caitlin. I'm a Senior Grants and Investment Officer. Hi, I'm Tom Shaw. I'm a Senior Grants and Investment Officer in the team. Hello there, I'm Claire Whitney. I'm a Strategic Lead. Thanks everyone. So the team is responsible for all aspects of end-to-end -end of the grant programme, so all the way from application and assessment, um, all the way down to monitoring and evaluation and reviewing the programme as a whole. Uh, so I'm now going to pass on to um, Councillor Kennedy to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Lisa. Um, uh, welcome, everybody, to um, the launch of our grants programme this year. Um, the first thing I want to say to everybody, um, apart from thank you for coming, is thank you for all the extraordinary and amazing work you have done. Um, especially during COVID and over the course of the last two years. Um, Councillor Bramble and I meet residents on a regular basis. Um, one of the most common things that has been said to me about voluntary and community sector during the course of these last two years is I couldn't have got by without X organisation. Um, if it hadn't been for them, I don't think I'd have made it through. Um, your organisations front and centre um, have been supporting our residents um, uh, through this uh, very difficult time for all of us. And actually the way in which you have been doing that has informed um, how the grants programme has been structured. So um, I, I look forward to sharing your delight as the team unfolds um, uh, to you um, how they've structured the grants programme for this year um, as we come uh, uh, into the uh, later part of the meeting. Um, uh, what you do and how you do it, obviously you do because you share our commitment to social inclusion um, and to um, equalities. Um, uh, and that inclusion um, is so vast. Last year, the grants program um, in Hackney, um, it touched every single ward in Hackney, obviously, um, but over 6,000 different um, residents uh, were benefited by the activities that you provided. Um, you work with over a, a, a thousand volunteers, and we know how beneficial volunteering is um, to our residents. Um, the help it provides to them, it's very good for uh, not only physical health, but mental health. Um, uh, many of uh, the organizations supporting those people um, are relatively small organizations with an annual, uh, more than half of you have an annual income of below 50,000 pounds of those of you who provide support through the small grants and the community chess program um, and it's absolutely that kind of um, grassroots commitment that we hope to build on uh, through this program um, look the team have all just introduced themselves but i did particularly want to say uh, thank you to sonia khan uh, thank you to claire whitney um, but as it, as you've seen the guys who uh, really do the work on the ground are, are moyo lisa sue caitlin and thomas so especially thanks to them um, 
Part of this grants program is provided by the Children and Families Service. So I'm going to hand over now uh, to Deputy Mayor uh, Councillor Antoinette Bramble to talk a little about that. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Thank you for your uh, leadership and the work that you do with officers. And just to extend my thanks to all the officers as well. It's really good to see so many people here from the uh, voluntary sector because you are a big part of what we're able to deliver for our children, families and all of our residents in Hackney. So thank you for your attendance. So as Councillor Kennedy mentioned, um, part of this grant will be um, from Hackney Children's Social Care. And what I found is that you may or may not know on the Hackney uh, Children's Social Care and Young Hackney Commissioning Framework, there are two lots. And increasingly, what I was noticing is that more and more, the same organisations were bidding across the two lots. And what, what I also was more keen um, to explore was why some of the organisations that I was out talking to, Councillor Kennedy was out talking to, and the Mayor, were not accessing those commissioning lots. Now, I'm not saying that those that are accessing it are not important, they are, absolutely are, but actually some of the smaller organisations that are supporting families, and what I mean by that, it's those families that maybe don't know how to approach the council, are not quite ready to approach the council, um, you are there supporting them. You are supporting the young people, you are supporting the families, and sometimes you are there telling us as the local authorities, actually, are you aware of this issue? Are you aware of this um, scenario? And actually, what I thought is actually what we need is a grant-based system for those organisations that are already doing the work in the community to sort of have the funding to support the work that they do in a way that's more meaningful and accessible uh, to them. And I want to thank the staff for embracing um, that idea. And actually, while it might have been an idea that I've had and discussed with Councillor Kennedy, it's you, it's the officers that are on here that I have to thank for that. And the point of that is that it will enable us to work more collaboratively with you as organisations and with Hackney CVS. It's to find a diverse range of organisations that will um, receive funding, and but also it's those organisations that are focused on equalities. That is a key thing for us as the local authority, and you as the organisations are best placed to do that. And to provide value for money and ensure that that funding is flexible. Commissioning framework are quite rigid, actually. And what I'm hearing from you as organisations is that you need that flexibility to deliver those outcomes for our children and young people, but in a way that works for you and that you know works for our families. And also to provide young people in the borough uh, through the support through VCS to thrive and have access to the support that they need uh, using the innovative and creative ways that you do. So I'll, st I'll end where I started just to thank the organisations for all you do and the officers as well. I'm really excited to see how these new arrangements will work better for you as organisations, for our children and young people. And again, extending my thanks to Councillor Kennedy and the team. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Kennedy and, and, and Councillor Bramble. Um, I'm just going to start, I'm just going to take us through a bit and say a little bit about where we are at the moment in what is a really an interim year for us, taking time to pause after the pandemic um, and uh, looking at the grants programme. So just by a little bit, bit of background, um, when we engaged with the sector to develop the VCS strategy, um, this was back in 2018-19, um, we learnt that we really could improve the way that the council funded organisations to meet the needs of our most disadvantaged um, residents. And I think one of the things that we learnt was we needed to change the way that we funded, not just what we funded. And the pandemic, I think, showed us the importance of collaborating and partnering in order to achieve the best outcomes for residents. And I suppose that's what we mean when we say the way in which we're funded, that becomes something that's really very, you know, increasingly important to us. Um, we know that although the grant programme aims and corporate plan are more closely aligned now, so the council has a corporate plan and we um, refresh that in the summer of 2020 and I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, we still have a little bit to do, I think, to make sure that our grants programme helps to deliver 
the, the priorities of our corporate plan. But we're really working towards that. And this interim year and taking stock is really giving us the opportunity to do that. And so next slide, please. So these are the, the, the council's um, corporate priorities. And we, we know the VCS, as Councillor uh, Kennedy has said already, is, very, is really well placed um, in its ability to reach and work with some of the most disadvantaged and, and vulnerable residents of the borough. Um, and, and funding is for the sector is really best deployed when we fully realise the, the, the sector's potential and play to those strengths. So the priorities of, our, of, of the grants programme supports the wider agenda of the council and our partners with a focus upon what we, we, we focus on intervention and prevention and, and building of resilience um, within communities. So I'm just going to talk through a little bit about the corporate plan. So that was refreshed in the summer of 2020 and it was really to make sure that our priorities really did help us focus as a council on the right immediate pandemic response as well as as the work that was needed to respond to the, the longer term impacts of the coronavirus um, that's going to be as you know felt for many years yet and so part of that was about resetting um, about looking at everything through a, a golden thread of inequalities disproportionality vulnerability and poverty and and really looking at how we need to work differently so you'll see there are the the corporate um, plan uh, priorities, but cross-cutting all of these is a, a keeping in focus of the most vulnerable and key inequalities, and specifically racial inequality. Okay, next slide, please. So where are we now? Um, we've learned a lot from um, the consultation um, and uh, engagement with the sector prior to and during the pandemic, and we've used a lot of this to begin to make some changes to the grants program. But given the challenges of the last two years, we really want to use this interim year to keep the majority of the program as it is with some minor changes for this year. So as not to cause, we don't want to cause further instability at, at such a difficult time, but we have recognized that need for change. We'll be looking probably to implement some longer term changes going forward to the grants program, but we'll be taking feedback at each stage of the process. Um, so please make sure when there's opportunities to do so, you contribute to this and really help us to shape um, the future of the grants program. Looking at the longer term, there are some key principles that we need to keep in mind um, when we're thinking about how to invest, invest in the future in the sector and that's what you can see described here um, the review of the grants program will be progressed over the next six to 12 months um, and, and basically we're looking you know we'll be exploring further opportunities um, to build in equality focused and anti-racist approaches to the delivery of, of our investment uh, next slide and I think I'm now handing over to Caitlin yeah, thank you, Claire. Hi, everyone. So the grants program this year will continue to del will continue to focus on the overarching program objective, which is to deliver actions that aim to narrow the gap in outcomes between certain disadvantaged groups and the wider community. And in addition to this, the two previous program priorities will remain the same for this year ahead. So these are to promote social inclusion, encourage interdependence and develop personal resilience, and also to build positive relations between different groups and communities that will maintain high levels of community cohesion in Hackney. So the table that should be on the next slide, it gives an overview of the grants programs uh, open for application this year. So these will be discussed in further detail shortly, but in terms of an overview, uh, we will have a project grants program, which replaces our old main and small grants programs. This is for applications of up to 10,000 or 20,000 pounds, depending on the income size of the organization. Projects are for up to 12 months in duration. Within the project grants, we have a separate strand for children and young people's grants. And this aligns to our old main grants, small grants and holiday play scheme grants. And this strand is being delivered in collaboration with our colleagues in Young Hackney. We have also restricted the income size for this strand, meaning that organisations can only apply with an income between £10,000 and £1 million. That's an annual income, I should clarify. 
This is based on research of our own grants program over the last five years, along with data on what other funders are supporting uh, within the borough. Although this is an inter interim year, we have undertaken some analysis of our data and feedback from the VCS um, over this past year to inform these proposals. And that analysis identified that the majority of grants were from external funders are award awarded to organisations with an annual turnover above £1 million. So in line with the priorities of the VCS strategy, we want to ensure that we continue to protect smaller grassroots organisations and those with less income. Uh, we, want to we want to make sure that they can continue to access our resources. So that's why we are limiting applications to those organisations um, with turnovers uh, below this threshold. In terms of community chess, this will remain similar to previous years, but this year we will have four rounds of uh, funding and we have also limited group size to those with an income less than £10,000. This is so that we can focus on ensuring that the community chess grants reach the hyperlocal grassroots groups of who the funding is intended to support. And community infrastructure, this is a new program for this year and we'll be giving grants of up to £45,000. And although we do anticipate that most grants will be around £10,000 to £25,000. Uh, this will be administered through a two-stage application process and the expression of interest stage will be open from February this year. Thank you, Caitlin. So this table outlines our closed grant schemes that are currently not open for applications. So the Specialist Grants is a programme to support key organisations within the borough. Um, and our social welfare advice grants are funding for advice services within the borough, which have been further stretched during COVID. Our specialist and advice grants have been extended for a further year this year, and we'll be using this year to review our specialist grants program in particular and how this fits into the grants program as a whole. We will be increasing the proportion of funding available for advice services from the grants budget. Prior to the pandemic, our analysis and comparison with similar boroughs highlighted that funding for advice services should be increased given the levels of need in Hackney. The impact of the pandemic on residents has stretched their resources even further and as critical services for preventing demand on statutory services, we need to ensure that they can provide timely interventions and advice. So what we're going to do now is talk through um, each of the programmes that Caitlin mentioned in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to pass over to Sue. Hi, so um, looking first at project grants. So the purpose of project grants is to fund short term activities working toward the programme objectives and the priorities that we've mentioned. If you're working specifically with young people, you should apply for the Children and Young People's Fund. Applicant organisations will be asked which one of the following eight equality outcomes they will be working towards. So you can see this includes, for example, the lives of people living in difficult circumstances are improved and people are supported to identify harmful patterns and take steps to change. So there's a number of categories there. Organisations will also be asked to describe their target beneficiary group and who, they, and who they're working with in this group. So this could include, for example, older people or refugees and or asylum seekers. Applications should be for projects between £1,001 and £20,000, depending on the income of the organisation. Projects cannot last longer than a year. And some of the past examples of funded projects include English language workshops, bringing together a diverse group of women, and, for example, fitness sessions for isolated older people to support them with their health and social connections. Those are the kind of activities. Passing on to Tom. So the pur purpose of the project grants for the Children and Young People's Fund is to fund short term activities working towards the programme objective and priorities which Caitlin mentioned earlier. Um, these projects will be targeting young people specifically. Applicant organisations will be asked which one of the six following youth equality outcomes they'll be working towards. Uh, these include, for example, being healthy, where young people are supported to become more active and to explore and understand issues relevant to the development of healthy relationships, positive physical and emotional and mental health. 
Organisations will be asked to describe their target beneficiary group and why they are working with this group. This could include, for example, disabled people or inactive or less active people. Applicants should be applications should be for projects between one thousand and one pounds and ten thousand pounds, depending on your organisation's annual income. And projects cannot last longer than one year. Some past examples of funded projects include um, a, hol a summer holiday play scheme for 60 children with long-term health conditions and a weekly homework for children with learning difficulties with an, uh, with an emphasis on improving social skills. And I'll now hand over to Moyo for the community chest ones. Thank you, Tom. The purpose of community chest grants is to fund short-term or in one-off activities working towards the program objective and priorities mentioned. As a reminder, remind, reminder these are to promote social inclusion, encourage independence, and develop personal resi resilience, and to build positive relations between different groups and communities that we maintain the high levels of community cohesion in our queen. Applicant organizations must have an annual income of less than 10,000 pounds per year. Projects should be for short-term activities or one-off projects, no longer than one year in length. And at least 80% of beneficiaries must be ACNE residents. Organizations may hold more than one community chairs grant per financial year if the projects do not overlap. The maximum grant amount is £1,000. Past examples of community chess grants include a free outdoor event to bring the community together, development of a small community garden in a dense housing area. And now I'll hand over to Claire. Thanks, Moyo. Um, and so this is um, a new funding stream that um, has been included this year. Um, we're we're be, um, going to be exploring how it works over the, over the next year. So it's a one year grant. Um, so what do we mean by community infrastructure? Um, it's a term that we just really started using and um, ended up being used as the name of the grant. And I suppose the, the easiest way to explain what it is, is where we um, have, have got to know organizations or become aware of organizations that use um, expertise and knowledge of communities and very person-centered ways of working and um, which is really dependent a lot of, on a lot of trust from residents and and just the way that organizations work provide significant outcomes for people that really aren't part of that organization's everyday services or projects and we were aware of this before the pandemic through the kind of some of the work we've done around the voluntary and community sector strategy but I think during the pandemic it's when it really became very clear um, the way that some organisations um, within Hackney worked. Um, and these organisations that also help to identify vulnerability and they've, they really help to engage in terms of res for res with residents in response to COVID-19. And that really was really significant in reducing the pressures on, on the council and on our partners in the health services. Um, and we saw a lot of organisations putting a lot of time and energy into collaborating meaningfully with each other um, and with the council to provide the best help for residents. And what we want to do through this grant is to really enable and allow organisations to really develop that and continue that work and, and work with us so we can learn more about organisations and the way they work and how they work as with other parts of the system, other organisations, the council, etc. It's not um, for a kind of, it's because community infrastructure might be a bit um, confusing. It's not for campaigning organizations or second tier or umbrella organizations or for pan, pan London activity. This is about our local community infrastructure. It's not something necessarily that every organization can or should apply for, um, but um, we can do more to explain it. And we have got a guidance session on, on the 17th, an information session on the 17th. So if you're interested, please do sign up for that. Um, and now handing over to Caitlin. 
Thank you. So I'm just going to take us through our general eligibility criteria. And if you've applied for a grant with us before, you'll be more than familiar with this. So to apply uh, to our grant funding, organizations must be non-for-profit, value-driven, and principally they must reinvest their surpluses back into any further social, environmental, or cult cultural non-for-profit objectives. Um, these are typically the following organizations, uh, but they're not limited to, and we encourage if you to send us an email with a copy of your governing documents if you have any questions about your eligibility, if you feel that it's not clear specifically for your organization. So it typically looks like uh, registered charities or charitable incorporated associations, uh, social enterprises or charitable companies, community interest companies, community uh, companies that are limited by guarantee. And these companies must have asset locks and they must be wholly non-for-profit without share capital. And if you are confused about that kind of thing, that's where sending uh, your documents through to us and letting us having a scan through will be able to identify it if they have those things. It might be a cooperative or community benefit society, or it might be an unregistered community group or an unincorporated group or a structured group of residents for our community chest. In terms of funding private businesses and individuals, they are not eligible to apply for grants from us. Uh, we are only looking to fund uh, non-for-profit organisations. At least 80% of the people that are benefiting from the funding requests that you put to us must be Hackney residents, and we may ask you to demonstrate this both at application and in reporting. Applications must align with the program guidance for the scheme that they are applying for, and that includes the start and the end dates and the annual income criteria. So very important just to read those funding guidances uh, for the uh, program that, and the scheme that you're looking for. And if applicants who have received a grant through this program from us in previous years have failed to fulfill any of the funding requirements of those grants, that might be a return of required monitoring forms, all that kind of thing, they may not be eligible or that may impact their eligibility in successfully obtaining a grant from us. In addition to the general eligibility, um, organisations do also need to provide a number of documents to us along with the application and we'll use these to conduct due diligence checks. This does vary slightly depending on the type of organisation and also if you're a structured group of residents applying for a community chest. But generally organisations must be registered with articles and or a constitution that has a clearly defined uh, set of aims and objectives. They must have an organisational bank account and where this isn't possible, say for a structured group of residents, um, extra checks will be carried out before the funding is released into an individual's account. You should um, have annual accounts to show income and expenditure. In the case of smaller groups, a financial forecast or projection is totally fine. You must have appropriate insurance and safeguarding policies, both for your organization in general and for the particular project that you're applying to us for. Usually those are one and the same. And you must be able to demonstrate that 80% of the beneficiaries will be Hackney residents. So I'm just handing over to Moyo now. Thank you, Caitlin. The, I'm going to explain to us about um, what we do not fund. So the VCS grants program does not accept application for any of the following political or exclusively religious activities, over eggs allocated or apportioned at rates materially in excess of those who use in similar work carried out by the organization. Generally, we will not expect OVIS to exceed around 20% of the total value of your grant application. Capital or building costs. Capital costs can only be applied for if it is direct, if it directly relates to the funding ask, and only then if it is a small part of the total cost. Costs paid or liabilities incurred before the start date of the grant, we do not fund that. The cost of work or activities that any other person or organization has a statutory duty to undertake. Activities undertaken outside of ACNE, although there may be some exceptions. For example, for example, ACNE residents may be assessing specialist courses, venues, or trips. 
previous debts, including con contingent liabilities, possible charges relating to past events, cover for something that may not occur, contingencies, interest charges or other costs resulting from delaying payments due to creditors, service charges arising on leases, higher purchase and other credit arrangements, depreciation of fees at assets paid for by, the, by, the, by these grants, any costs that are not outlined within the grant applications. So you cannot apply for any of these. We do not fund any of these. Thank you. I hand over now to Lisa. Thanks, Moye. So I'm going to um, just talk you through um, kind of what the process looks like uh, once you've applied. The exact process does differ slightly per grant scheme, but a general overview is, so the first stage is plan. So we've got lots of guidance documents on each scheme. These are published on the website. So we strongly recommend you take time to read and understand all of these resources in order to plan your application. Um, and in addition, there are information sessions taking place over the coming weeks, so do sign up to those to find out more. Uh, when you're ready to apply, so all applications must be made via our online application portal ahead of the deadline. We can't accept any late applications, so do give yourself enough time to get everything submitted. Um, if you are experiencing difficulties with the portal, please contact us in plenty of time so that we can assist you. So the assessment phase, once your application has been submitted, the grants team will process um, and ensure that groups meet eligibility criteria um, and will also conduct due diligence checks based on the documents that you submit. Your application will then be passed on to a team of trained volunteer assessors, um, both from um, the council and also from the VCS. They'll score your application and will then meet as a grants panel to decide which applications will be funded. So please note, we will always receive more applications um, than we'll be able to fund. So assessors have to make really difficult decisions based on the information provided in your applications, as well as taking into account what else we're funding to ensure that we have a geographical inequality spread with the grants that we're supporting. When decisions are made, applicants will be notified and all unsuccessful applicants will be given the opportunity to get feedback from the team. Uh, so successful organisations will be contacted with grant agreements which will be issued and signed electronically and the payment process will commence. All organisations are paid through our supplier management system. So once you have your funding, deliver your grant um, as outlined in your application and grant agreement. If you do need to make changes to your grant, please do contact your grants officer to discuss this in advance. Uh, reporting phase. So you'll be asked to submit a written report um, at the end of your grant, approximately one month after the finish date. Some larger projects might um, also have midpoint calls or monitoring visits, but your grants officer will be in touch to discuss that further. Um, your grants officer will also provide feedback to you before closing off the grant and any unspent funds will need to be returned to us as they go back into the grants pot for the next year of funding. So as I mentioned, it does differ very slightly for the different grant strands, but that's just to give you a general overview of, of what the cycle looks like. So I'm now going to pass over to Sue. Thanks, Lisa. So this table um, outlines the application periods and closing dates for the up and coming grants. So the project grants are now open um, from now until the 25th of April. Um, community chests will have a rolling deadline throughout the year. And the first of those deadlines is also the 25th of April. Uh, community infrastructure will have a two stage application process. So expressions of interest, that's the first stage. That starts today, the 7th of February, and will run to around the 20th of March. And then the second stage, um, should you be successful at stage one, that will run from the 9th of May through to the 6th of July. I'm just going to hand over to Tom. Thanks, Sue. Uh, so over the next coming days and weeks, we'll be hosting some further information sessions on different grant schemes. So you can go through the information in more detail, as well as provide some guidance on the application questions. All these sessions will be recorded like the one today and links will be available online following the event. Uh, you can sign up to the events via the, the links provided. I'll now hand over to Moya. Thank you, Tom. 
Um, I'm just going to talk to us about some key documents and resources available to support uh, applicants with your applications. Our website will always contain all the up-to-date information and links that you will need, including the links to application forms. Our VCS Prospectus gives you an overview of the whole grants program, as well as information about general eligibility. There is a guidance document for each grants program, which includes more information and guidance on specific application questions. We have compiled a document with information on general support available for VCS organizations. We also have some resources on our websites, which you can use to help you with checking your policy documents for due diligence purposes. New for this year, we have also created some video resources to guide you through specific processes. For example, how, how to log into the application portal. We will keep adding videos as and when the need arises. I now hand over to Caitlin. Hi, sorry, just one second. I'm just going to quickly answer some of the questions that have been popped in there before we forget and they get um, kind of taken over. So Jessica, just in terms of your question, uh, in cases where your annual income has been boosted exceptionally due to COVID-19 um, and we're satisfied that um, this is the reason why, we're happy to take the average of your, uh, the average annual income over the last three years uh, with the hope that that would bring that down. Um, Gareth, I've answered your question. And then in terms of the application opening dates, uh, they will be on the guidance there, Helen. Um, but we will pop those in the chat for you. Just let me find my place again, sorry. So in terms of the additional support, it is available via our team and also through our partner organizations. You can contact us if you have any general questions about the program uh, through the community partnerships at hackney.gov.uk email. Hackney uh, CBS are also able to provide bespoke application support through their organizational development team. And they'll also be running application sessions uh, between February and April this year. So definitely take those up uh, if you're keen. Elba, uh, they also have offer to an application review service where trained business volunteers through the corporate sector can look at your application and provide impartial advice, uh, comments and feedback. And both Hackney CVS and Elba's application support services are free for VCS organisations to access. Thank you, Caitlin. That's great. Um, so we have reached um, the kind of end to the formal presentation. So just to reconfirm, um, after this session, we will be in touch um, with you via email. Um, we'll be sending you a short feedback form along with a copy of these slides. Um, and as mentioned, the recording of the session will be made available online via our website. So what I'm going to do now is um, stop recording this session um, and then we will answer um, some of your questions, which I think um, Caitlin has been answering some of them.